I'm Ted Berg for SNY.TV, and this is Know Your Enemy, presented by Pepsi Max. The Mets travel to Cincinnati for a three-game set that begins tonight, so today we're talking to Chad Dotson from RedLegNation.com for a scouting report on the Reds. Chad, how are you? Doing good. How are you today? Good. We like to start out with one good thing about the opponent. A lot of things going well for the Reds right now, but none so much as their bullpen, which has been unbelievable this year. Well, the bullpen has been fantastic, and obviously the, the one that everyone's talking about is Aroldis Chapman, who, uh, you know, I like to look at a stat that he's uh, pitched, you know, 50-some fewer innings than Jared Weaver, uh, a Cy Young candidate in the American League, and has the same number of strikeouts. He's been just incredible, but uh, you know, Sean Marshall from the left side has been very, very good, although Dusty Baker's a little bit hesitant to use him sometimes. Don't ask me why. They just got Jonathan Brocks, and it's, it's been fantastic. Uh, no complaints whatsoever about this uh, bullpen. Reminds a lot of people of the old nasty boys from the 1990 champion. Right, let's talk about Chapman for a minute because he's a guy who's been so dominant. I know there, were, there was talk about his role coming into the year. Do you think they, they leave well enough alone and keep him as a closer, or do you think ultimately they're going to move him into the rotation? Well, they keep saying that they're going to move him into the rotation. I don't think that's going to happen this year, obviously. It'll be uh, next spring at the earliest. And they, and they started to do it this spring before they had an injury to Ryan Madsen at closer. What I worry about, however, because I want him to be a starter, I think he can be much more valuable as a starter. If you've ever seen Great American Ballpark, when Chapman comes in to close the game in the ninth, it's as electric as that ballpark has ever been. And so I'm afraid that uh, they're just going to decide to leave well enough alone. But they're still saying the right things that they're going to move him back to the rotation eventually. The flip side of things for the Reds, if there is one, uh, some, they got some bad news lately on Joey Votto, their best player. What's the latest on him? And how long can they keep winning in his absence? Well, I wouldn't have believed they could go 19-8 and eight since he's been gone. I'd never in a million years would I have believed that. The offense is just not the same without Votto. Um, he, this past week, they found another piece of floating cartilage in his knee. He had to, he had to go, undergo another procedure and have that removed. And There's some thought that he might miss all of August, although they're hoping to get him back for the Cardinal series here in about uh, 10, 12 days. Uh, you know, the offense without Votto is not very intimidating, but when you have Certainly guys like Ryan Ludwig, who's just been unbelievable. Todd Frazier's been unbelievable. They can't keep winning indefinitely without Votto, but so far, so good. Uh, I guess as long as they can tread water without him, then they get him back, and it's it's the best uh, acquisition of all time. <laughs> well, you know, that's what we were saying at the uh, uh, trade deadline, was there's no team in the world that uh, is going to expect a player to get back in their lineup. Like They're not going to make any trades to get anybody as good as Joey Votto. So the Reds are actually sitting fairly in a fairly good position as we uh, hit the dog days of the Season. Let's talk about the pitchers in this series. Uh, the first starter, Matt Latos, has just been great lately. Well, Matt Latos had a very rough April, and you know he was acquired in a big trade with the Padres uh, over the offseason. And his April was so bad that a lot of people were really uh, down on Latos. And I've always been telling everyone, be patient. This guy's good, and he's been spectacular over the last couple of months. Uh, if it weren't for Johnny Cueto's uh, amazing season, Matt Latos uh, would be the uh, the ace of this staff. Um, his numbers are still a little higher than his career norms, but uh, he's, just, he's been fantastic. Mike Leake, tomorrow's starter, is an interesting guy. His rate stats are very similar to last year's, but his ERA has jumped up a bit. Is that a difference of just luck, or, or has he been more hittable? Well, a little from column A, a little from column B. Leake is, uh, is what he is at this point. He's still a young guy, a former number one draft pick. He's only 24 years old, and, and he does what young pitchers do. He's inconsistent. Um, and so uh, he's not been awful. He's had a few sort of notable, very poor performances that make his uh, ERA look even worse, but uh, mostly he's been dependable. Uh, his last few starts have been less so, but uh, the Reds still have high hopes he's a young guy. And Homer Bailey, who's Thursday's starter this week, has just been roughed up the last few times out. Well, he has been. Um, you know, the, the Cubs and the Pirates sort of got to him and the, and the Padres in his last three outings. Before that, he was had been spectacular. And really, a lot of people were talking, finally, here's Homer Bailey that we've all been waiting for. But I don't know what uh, has happened. There's nothing really discernible uh, that's happened to him. No injuries, nothing. He's just been not good recently. The Reds hope he gets back to the, the guy that we saw through the month of uh, July, which uh, was a very good pitcher indeed. Chad, thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Remember, for all the latest Mets coverage, be sure to check in at MetsBlog.com, TedQuarters.net, and SNY.TV.